Welcome to Shorty Supercoach. How are you guys going out there? Shorty's finished work and we're diving into the team, the press conference. And I must say I'm a little fucking nervous. I'm not really sure how I went this week. I checked the scores uh, this morning and I was feeling okay. Felt like I was in a few of the leagues doing all right, but a bit went on this week. Um, we had Gorn, we had uh, Neil. I, f- I just feel like I missed out on a big captain score. Um had Jaden Short really good, I don't know, I just feel a little bit uneasy about, I reckon I'd have just a touch behind the eight ball, but we'll find out in a second, so hope you guys had a good week, I also feel like I've just slipped a little bit in terms of my trade plans, I'll talk about that later, but um, yeah, like I said, finished work, um, not a bad shift, it's always nice on a Sunday when I actually finish before nine o'clock, because then I can get this video out a little bit sooner, Um but yeah, it was funny, one of my last deliveries, like, delivering at night, obviously, and um, if you don't know, I just deliver groceries for Coles at the moment, just a little part-time gig for Shorty, temporary thing, um, and yeah, I went up to this one house, like, it's pitch black, normally there's, like, a light on or something, and um, the security light goes on, I'm like, shit, and then this old bloke comes out, I could sort of see him in the lounge room, and he, he looked a bit caught off guard, he comes out, he's like, oh, Oh, fuck, mate, you, you caught me by surprise. There I was just smoking pipes and drinking alcohol. I forgot you were coming. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit. Sounds like a pretty handy Sunday afternoon, bro. Oh, it was pretty funny. And then, yeah, he was uh, he was on for a bit of a chat, old mate. He had, uh, he had quite, the, quite the afternoon slash evening, I think. He was loving it. But, um, oh, yeah, you should have seen the other week, too. Um, at work in the loading dock, like in the docking bay, there's these big motherfucking moths. Now, I'm not a major fan of moths at the best of time. It's not like I'm not scared of moths, but I just don't like them that much. You know, they, they piss me off. They're erratic. They're, they're all over the place. They just annoy me. But I am freaked out by the big ones. Like, I'm talking like this this big. Like, I don't know if... Like this, this glass kind of big. I'm serious. I don't, I don't know what sort of thing they are, but I just thought you'd normally see them like in the forest or like down in some random cabin. But there they are. I've seen them in there, like just on the ground. I don't know what's going on. But a couple of weeks back, so you you unload your van, and they're obviously attracted to light and stuff. And there's a light in the van, the back of the van bit. And one's obviously flown in there. I've already cleared out my van and stuff. I'm like, you bastard. <laughs> it's flying around. It's darting around all over the place. I'm like, oh, shit. You, what the hell's going on here? And I thought, okay, okay. I must have had a couple of crates in there left. And I was like, all right, all right. I won't be full callous. I won't kill you. I'm going to walk away, leave the door open. You have a fair chance, moth, to get out and escape and save your life. I'm giving you a fighting chance. If you are not there, I will kill you. Because I know what you're thinking. Just shut the thing, mate, and he'll be fine. Well, <laughs> in the morning, they reload the same vans. I'll tell you what, at 5.40 in the morning, I don't want a big-ass moth flying straight into my face unexpectedly, so I thought, oh, I can't do that to the morning, boys. Anyway, I walked off, did my thing. Ten minutes later, moth's still in there. I thought, ah, I'm going to have to kill you, buddy. I didn't want to do this. We could have worked this out civilly, but no, you had to fucking hang around. Anyway, we get these fold-down crates. They're like those red crates, but you, you fold them down. And I just threw one. And I thought, well, if I miss, I'm going to have to get that crate. And I'm going to have to take the moth on. But I nailed him. I didn't feel good about it. Don't think I'm a psycho or a savage. But I gave the moth a fighting chance. And he chose death. So... Anyway, that's a little off topic, uh, but that's what you get on the late shorty session. Let's actually dive into some super coach, why don't we? Like I said, a bit nervous. I want to see, I'd love to see 2400, um, but I definitely left some points on the table. You know when you have those weeks where you're like, also I don't want to drop ranks, that's one of me. I'd love six or seven league wins and no drop in rank, or minimal. I'll even take minimal, let's see. Oof, that's a bad start. <laughs> uh, oh, baby. Oh, shit. All right. Fuck, that's weird. Three out of ten. But I actually had a pretty solid week. Solid. There were some massive whopper scores. But to go up in rank, I'm stoked about. 
But to, to win three leagues is a bit disappointing. Anyway, let's dive into the team. And I had McRae as skipper, and I, I thought about putting Cripps as vice. I switched to Oliver. Uh, anyway, let's work from the defense. Crisp, he's been really solid doing his thing. Ridley scored 115. Whoa, didn't expect that. I don't know. You know when you listen to on the radio and you just feel like you haven't heard their name at all? And I'm not a big guy for checking stats regularly, particularly when I'm at work. Didn't think he went that well, but I'll take that. Short was insane. Center bounce sort of stuff from Jaden Short. Couldn't believe it. How good was that? He was just launching it. Got a few tackles in there. Sending the ball 50 meters every time he got the pill. Day cost 75. Solid, but first price drop. So... He's very reliable scorer in terms of rookie. Could potentially be on the chopping block. O'Driscoll, almost definitely on the chopping block. He's done well. He's up over 300k. But I think we're going to see a break even that's, well, probably beyond 30 or 40, I reckon. Um, Gibkiss was really impressive and he's starting to really warm into his work. And he was a bloke that I contemplated selling at about 220k. He's now going to be well beyond 300, which is really really important for the old cash gen and i'm just uh oh, i'm just so pissed off that mccray didn't fire particularly when you know i've had a decent week the team's gone well but i just know that others would have had gone as skipper uh probably not neil but you know it's gone's the main one so it hurts but steel's rock solid how good's neil oliver played really well but once nash went to him i reckon oliver had 17 touches in about 40 minutes of footy he was on fire um, but just got slowed up a touch. I brought Brayshaw into the team, and this is... I know he's had a really good year, but it's always just a bit frustrating when you bring a guy into the team and he scores his lowest score of the year. It's not a bad score, but it is what it is. Um, Paddy Cripps was really, really impressive. So was Cornelio, and so was Martin. So that midfield really was sensational. And Martin's just going to be one of the... Best cash cows, like we always thought he could be, but he's always he's had a second wind. He's coming again, 95 and then 106. Wits has been, it's the one thing that helps me sleep at night after I trade a Gorn out. Even though I, that is a mistake in theory, Wits actually couldn't have been much better. And when you take into account the money that I made off that trade, plus the points, it's not as bad as it first felt. Bruce, super solid. Hayes, not ideal. Didn't see much of the game, but not ideal. But he should s still have chances to score plenty of 80-pluses over the next month. Dunkley, fantastic. Heaney turned up in a, in a side that was, or in a day that was relatively tough for the Swans. Parker was sensational. Now, I talk about Brayshaw bringing him into the team. This has his lowest score. You bring Parker into the team. Has one of his best. I think he scored about 160 in round one, but 150 massive he jumps what's that like nearly 50k something like that so um will Brody, just yeah i don't know dockers had such a good day but you know brayshaw and Brody just didn't have their best days so but as i thought was solid i didn't see too much of the game like i mentioned but it looked like he was playing much better position and and the role we want 89 is not anything to you know shout out for glory and think how great it is but it's solid um, when he lined it up in that first centre bounce, I was like, yeah, excellent. That's what we want to see. Um, Roses, you know, not great. He had a couple of 70s, obviously, in his first two games. A bit down, but it's good to see him back in the team. Hopefully he can hold his spot. DeConning, really, really good. couple of weeks. A bit like Gibkiss has started to sort of um, have a bit of a unexpected rising coin. And Dixon, it's probably just good that he got in the team. He goes up about 30k. Um, he loses that 96 now, so most of his cash gen, it's not done, but it's definitely slowed right up. So um, that's uh, it is what it is. Honestly, I think you know the late withdrawal of George Hewitt on the Friday sent a curveball, so I was happy to just have 22 scoring, to be honest, because there would have been some that, that didn't have that. Now, what I was alluding to in terms of what I was just spewing about with the the trade plan. So I wanted to bring in, and if you saw me preview, I, I was bringing in for Rochelle and Horn Francis. Parker was always coming in, but then it was one of the three, Petrarca, Miller, or Brayshaw. So I not I picked the one with the lowest break even, and Brayshaw is one of my favorite plays. But not only did I leave points on the table, 
to add that on to the McRae skipper. But now I just feel like I really thought I could have got all three within about two, three weeks. Now it's going to be really tough. So put it this way, if I pick Miller or Petrarca, I get them at a great price, probably the lowest price of the year. But the fact that not only do I miss the points, but now Brayshaw is dropping and his price isn't going anywhere fast because this 77 will just be like a dead weight on him and he's not going anywhere. So it means, hey, I can get Brayshaw in three weeks, in theory, if I didn't have him. So I'm guessing Petrarca's probably gone up to about 560 two or something 560 and miller he'll be 595 or something like that 592 so yeah where's um taranto 501 saucy tom stewart tom stewart was the other one i wanted to mention that was nuts again that pissed me off so a few upgrades that i was looking at over the next three weeks were definitely petrarca miller and stewart now and taranto as well I doubt, so I'm just going to be like, hey, Tommy Stewart, I'll see you in five weeks, mate, because he's going to get two weeks of launching up beyond 6.30, and then we're going to need him to trickle back down, and I hope I can get him around 5.80 at some stage. Generally speaking, he's a 95 to 115 guy. He doesn't normally have too many outriders. That was statistically his career best game. He may have played better games, but statistically, massive. So that hurts a touch. What am I thinking for this week? Actually, I wonder what leagues did I win? I hope I got the Braggers win because that's one that I really wanted to... Got it. Crucial. Crucial. I must. I reckon I had some close losses because I looked mid, like during the day. I thought I was a chance. So I lost that one by 35 points. That stings. I got pumped there, got pumped there, got pumped there by over 100 points, won that by five, oh, junkyard dog, my brother, oh, bro, spewing, that's brutal, sorry, man, shit, <laughs> saying sorry for a five point when super coach is a bit like the, the net cord in tennis, isn't it, sorry, mate, secretly, it's like, come on, you bastard, um, tight one there against Pat's Legends, Another tight one against the Bandits. 13 points. Got pumped by a fuck no. And had a pretty tight win against Excess McCluggage. So, yeah, okay. Okay. Um, what was I saying? So, in terms of my trade thoughts initially... Um, just thinking... Miller had a break even at 130, so I really didn't think he was going to move too far. Bangs out of 160, so his break even goes to 85. And off the back of you know that 124 last year, I'm leaning towards trusting him just slightly more than Petrarca. It's a real tough one, and it might just come down to who I can actually afford. So Petrarca bust out of 131. Yes, mm. yeah, I'm leaning towards Miller. So what I'm thinking, Dacos, I'm guessing his break even's roughly around, I'm thinking it might be somewhere in the 80s. I just think, like, he's so reliable, but it does get to a point where these guys are cash cows, 74 still, so he'll still get that break even, one would imagine, and he is capable of 90 plus, but he he hasn't done that for a few weeks, so... Maybe, if I want to be aggressive, I can move him on. Nathan O'Driscoll, like I said, I, I was anticipating this break-even might be somewhere in the 40s. How's my break-even guesstimate? 77, it's miles off. you got to go, Nath. You're gone. Um, uh, what else was I thinking about? Not much, really. So, yeah, my initial thoughts would be... O'Driscoll down to Clark, wasn't he great? How good was that? So that would give me, where is he? That would give me 201 plus the 22 in my bank, 223. Dacos is 379, so that would give me 382, 402, 602. So I could get Miller. Okay. Where was Petrarca? So it's about 33 difference. 
Yeah, I don't know. I'd say very likely to be Tuke Miller coming into the team. But I'll have a ponder. We'll see what happens throughout the week. Let me know how you score because there'd be some massive scores going on out there. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Hope it was a good one for you. I'll talk to you guys soon. Cheers.